As we move into chapter two, section five, we are still working with three loop Venn diagrams and we're gonna do some more shading. Like with the last set of uh, diagrams we shaded, we want to think about labeling them A, B, C. And remember that the box represents that universal set. So if we do A, B, C for each of these three loop diagrams, then we'll be ready to go. Our instruction says to shade each specified region and then label using set notation. So we have two things to do for each of these. The first one is a pretty simple way to start. We're supposed to shade A. So anything inside loop A is included. So we're shading four regions total. And set notation for A is simple, it's just A. In words, however, in the next one, if I'm asked for A only, well, A only implies I don't want anything that's included in B or C. So A only is this just A region one. And in set notation, I wanna think about starting with A and subtracting anything that is B or C from A. Okay, what about both A and B? Well, and is my keyword. <clears throat> Remember, and means intersection. So which of my regions are in loop A and loop B? Well, these two regions, regions three and five, are in both loop A and B. And my and is my intersection keyword, so that's my notation. For the next one, I want to start with A and B, but not C. So if I look at A and B, I have those two regions, but region five is also in C. So A and B, but not C, would be just region three. So that's gonna look like A intersect B minus C. And then our last one on this page, A, but not B. So I'm starting with A and then I'm taking out these two regions that are also part of B. So A but not B includes region one and region four. And the notation looks like A minus B. Again, these shadings give you something to look back on to verify that you're doing the right thing and looking at the right regions when you're looking at specific examples. Those were general cases. General cases is part of our deductive reasoning. Now we're gonna to switch to a specific example and we're actually going to answer questions about a three loop Venn diagram. Now notice that my loops are labeled something not ABC because they're labeled to match what they re reference. 50 people were surveyed, so there are 50 people total in my universal set. The number of people total we have is 50. They're asked if they work out, and if they work out, they're in the W loop. If they watch TV, and if they watch TV, they're in the T loop. Or if they read during their free time, and if they read, they're in the R loop. Now we're supposed to use the diagram to shade each specified region. It doesn't give us any numbers to fill in, so right now we are just shading regions and we're giving the notation. People who read. Well, let's start by labeling our loops for workout, TV, and read. To make sure that we have our Venn diagrams labeled so that we're all the same. If you're choosing not to print, if you're just writing these down, make sure that you're taking the time to put the box around your Venn diagram to represent the universal set. So people who read are gonna be in our R loop. We don't talk about anything else. We don't care if they do or do not do the other two things. We're just interested in do they read? Well, that's my R. People who only read, now we're interested in, they don't do these other two things. So they're just in the R loop, they're not in the other loops. People who only read would be represented by R minus W or T. Or I could say R minus W minus T. Either one of those would work notation-wise. 
What about people who read and watch TV? Well, read and watch TV. That's these two loops. And these two regions, regions five and six, are both in those two loops. Notation-wise, that looks like read intersect watching TV. That's that keyword and. Then we've got read and watch TV. That's where we started here, but don't work out. So we've got that intersection of read and watch TV, but then we're going to take away the people who work out. So instead of loops five and six, we just got loop six. That's that intersection of read and TV without the working out people. And finally on this problem, people who read but don't watch TV. So we've got our read loop. We want to exclude the TV watchers. I didn't say anything about working out. We're not considering it right now. So we're looking at read minus my TV watchers and we shade those two regions. The emphasis with this in shading is that the words matter. As we start going through the, the coming activities, you're gonna see that it, the way things are worded is going to make a difference in what regions you're looking at for your answer. Um, <coughs> so, we're not going to focus on notation on this. We are just going to shade the specified regions. For this first one, we're looking for regions in exactly one set. I haven't named my sets. They could be anything. But if let's say, let's go ahead and, and label our loops just as A, B, C, um, because that's what we're used to. But in reality, we could be talking about any loops, any regions. Regions in exactly one set would be those regions that are just A, just B, or just C. A, B, and C implies intersection. Remember that keyword is and? So I'm looking for the regions that are a part of all three loops, and that is just that interior region five. Regions in exactly two sets. Exactly two means not just one, not just one, and not this one that's in three sets, the one that are in exactly two. So this region is in A and B, this region is in A and C, and this region is in B and C. So you can start seeing the differences. These three regions are in exactly one. This region shares all three these three regions are in exactly two. Now exactly two and at least two are not the same thing. Exactly two means two. At least two means two or more. Well, for our purposes, the only more would be three. So if it's in at least two, it's in two or three sets. So for this wording, we shade all four of those intersection regions. Exactly three sets is the same thing as the intersection of all three. At least one means it's inside a loop. At least means it can be in more than one loop. But we're gonna shade everything inside a loop we are not going to shade that region 8 for the universal set that's outside the loops. Again, this wording emphasis is going to be important as we move forward with our practice activities. Okay, the final page for this activity gives us another specific example. And this gives us numbers to go along with it. So we are told that a survey was taken of 560 adults. So our total for you is 560, and that's already stated here. The total number in the universal set are 560 adults. Then we got some results. We've got a T represents the adults who watch television, and R represents the adults who read books. We have our loops. Um, labeled as our book reading loop and our TV watching loop and then we've got our universal set the people who don't do either will be out here represented in that other region. Alright, 
So we've got 520 adults who watch television. That's the total number of adults who watch television. So my T total will be 520. 125 adults read and watch television. Well, which region does that 125 go in? Does it go in region one, region two, region three, or region four? If they read and watch TV, then that means there's 125 people right there. Then it tells me that 10 people, 10 adults in the survey, said they didn't do either one. Well, if 10 people don't do either one, then that means they're out here in the universal set, but not part of a loop. Okay, we have some missing blanks to fill in. We don't know the total number of people that said they read. We don't know how many people just read, and we don't know how many people just watch TV. So those are our three missing values. Do you see how we can start filling any of these in? Well, we know that 520, 520 people total said they watch TV. That means this loop needs to have a sum of 520. 125 do both, so the rest of those people just watch TV. So we can come over here and we can subtract. We can say, all right, I know I have a total of 520 people who said they watch TV. 125 of those also read how many people just watch TV. Well, when I do that subtraction, I get 395. Um, we still have two blanks open. I know that the total number of people surveyed was 560. How many people do I have represented? Because I've got four regions. I have region one, two, three, and four. And the total of those four regions should be 560. So if I've got 395 and 125 here, the sum of those is that 520. And I've got another 10 out here, so that's 530 people out of the 560 people surveyed. So 560 minus that 530 that's already shown means there are 30 people who said they just watch TV, they don't read. Oh, no, 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 backwards. That they just read, they don't watch TV. Okay, so the sum of these four regions is equal to the number of people surveyed. How many people said, yes, I read? Well, the number of people who said, yes, I read, are the number of people in both of these regions. 30 plus 125 is 155 people. Now, if I add up 155 plus 520, I get 675 people. That's more than the number of people surveyed. Why? Well, remember that we can't count our intersection twice. I can't just add these totals to get the number of people in the universal set because that is counting that intersection more than one time. If I want to know how many people are in my universal set, I add up the, the number for each individual region. Now I have three questions to answer about this Venn diagram. First, how many adults watch television but do not read? How many watch TV, so they're in the TV loop, but they're not in the reading loop? Well, that number was 395. How many adults read but didn't watch TV? So they're in the reading loop, but not in the TV watching loop. That's just 30. How many adults read? That's the total for both of those regions, so that is 155. Notice that we filled out our Venn diagram completely. We filled in all the numbers before we attempted to answer the questions.